and take that title, take the title of this uh, live broadcast seriously. I mean that title. The devil is busy. The enemy is busy. It is 3.41 a.m. Uh, here on my side of the country. So that means it's 6.41 a.m. on the other end. And whatever other time it is in between. Ah, oh, the devil is busy. The devil is a liar. Understand this. And I, I think hell just got a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. The first thing I, I, I need to do is remind the monster where he's going to end up. In Revelation 20 and verse number 10. You better stay prayed up. Pray before you go to bed. Ask God to protect you in your dreams as well. Uh, in your dreams as well as as um, as uh, when you're awake. Re the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20 and verse number 10. Having a nightmare? Are you having nightmares? Do you try to open up your Bible and hear other thoughts coming at you? Get sleepy, whatever that is, whatever distraction that is that's trying to step in between you and praying, in, be in between you and praising God, in between you in between you reading that book, that Bible. That something isn't quite right when that kind of thing happens. Revelation 20 and the in verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day. Do you hear that? And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Remember that. Now, hello, Bubbles Butterfly. Remember that. Now, that devil is walking around seeking whom he may devour. Hear me well now. Hear me well. We're going to read, uh, first of all, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you to protect me my household, my mind, my body, my soul, and my spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and my entire family in all three states. Protect my household where I live in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Anything that thinks it can roll up here spiritually Father God, I pray you will bind and send it back from where it came. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please understand about people that trust in God and love him and serve him. Please understand something. I'm, I'm going to sound like I'm insane. I'm going to sound like I'm crazy, but I'm not. Please understand that you need to you need to pray over yourself before you go to bed. You need to pray over your household. Yes, you do. Pray over your household. The devil is busy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And not everybody that calls you their friend is your friend. There are double agents, so to speak. There are people that pretend that they're serving God, but they actually actually are witches. They think that they can read the Bible and then they can serve Satan at the same time because they do, they do not have the patience to wait on God. So they say, well, there's nothing wrong with me lighting a few of these brown and black candles or li lighting a green candle for money and lighting a red candle for love and lighting a brown candle for sickness. You see, you know, pe pe people, people are, there are a lot of double-minded, I'm talking to, I'm talking to somebody. I know I am. There's a lot of double-minded people play pretending to serve God. And they, 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 they want things instantly, you see. They want to make it to heaven when they die. 
But while they're on the earth, they also want they all also want to sit there and low key serve Satan. You can't have both. You can't have both. You better stop playing games. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody. You better stop playing games with Satan. You think you can sit there and mess with people? You think you can mess with a child of the living God? You 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 done made a mistake. Because God woke me up and let me know. Please understand. See, that's one thing I'm not is a phone is a phony when it comes to God. I'm not a phony. I'm not a fake. See, you done ran into the wrong one. My grandmother used to be a witch, or my my the grandmother of my siblings was the real deal witch. I know all about that stuff. You gotta be very careful who you play who you playing with. Be very, very careful how you handle God's people. I'm telling you right now. It, 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 whew, I would not be up at 3.45 a.m. if I was not serious about what I'm saying. Yeah, you need to pray over it. Get that oil out. Get that oil out and anoint yourself. And then hit up the windows and doors of where you live. And ask God to protect you in the name of of Jesus Christ. There is a name that is above every other name. And make sure you use it in your prayers. A second Samuel chapter. Yeah, I rebuke you. A God rebuke him or her. I think it's a her. A rebuke her in the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. Cancel the devil's assignment that would ever try to come up against me in the name of Jesus Christ. Reverse it and send it back from whence it, whence it came, trying to come up in here. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22. And David spoke unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him. You hear that right there? Had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. This right here, this these this right, it's all powerful. The entire Bible is powerful. But I need you to write down 2 Samuel and chapter 22. And I need you to read that in your homes. Oh, yes, indeed. I need you to meditate on this word. If it worked for David, it can work for us in the name of Jesus Christ, amen? You need to rebuke that devouring spirit. You need to, re you need to rebuke the, 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 the curses that people think they can send your way. You need to rebuke that thing, and don't forget, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, some of them people, some, some people out here are serving Satan. I'm sorry to stop for a moment. They're serving the devil low key. Yes, they are. Yeah, I'm calling you out. Yes, you are. You can't serve God and mammon. Either you will love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other. You better get yourself straight. You better get yourself straightened out. Because uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. He says from uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Who are you going to be present with when you drop that body? Who are you going to be present with? Who are you serving? Who are you serving? Don't think it's fun and games that you're trying to light candles and do incantations from Satan. Don't you think that don't do just to get a quick result. See, you need to understand something about God's people. God will wake you up and tell you. So if you want to sit there and play games and play around and play footsie with Satan, that's who you're going to go to when you're done with this world. Even if you're running to that church house every week, but you low key serving the devil. You can't serve both. God is a jealous God. You getting mad about earthly things. So you run into the devil to try to get some help with some earthly things, or you're angry at somebody. Yeah, somebody is shaking right now, scared, because I'm calling you out. Who you think you kidding? See, that's the thing about me. I'm really saved. <laughs> I really believe in God. 
I really believe in Jesus Christ. I really believe in the Holy Ghost. I really believe that there is a better place, a better life. I believe that we're going to have a glorified body when we leave this planet. I believe that Jesus Christ went to the tree, to the cross, and became sin. He who knew no sin, he who knew not sin, became sin and took our place. See, I really believe that. There's some people that go to church and they read those words and say hallelujah, or they get on the internet and they claim that they're trying to get themselves together and they claim, but they're not of God. No, you're not. You're not of God. You can't have your foot in the world and then have your try to get your eyes in the Bible is one or the other. You better take heed and take warning of my words. You better stop playing, playing footsie with the devil in this world and then think that when you leave this world that you're going to a nice place. You're not. He talks about his jealousy in the scriptures for a reason. He talks about how he hates pride, the people who are full of themselves because Satan was full of pride. So you need to sit your prideful behind down and repent. Repent in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm warning you ahead of time now. I'm warning you ahead of time. Almighty, powerful God can squish us at any time like a cockroach under his feet. So you need what you need to do is get your behind out of Satan's world and come back to the scriptures. You know that Bible or some of it anyways, stop trying to get immediate gratification with what the devil is offering. You, 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 a double-minded man is, is confused in all his ways. You double-minded. You're double-minded. I'm calling you out. A double-minded man, let me correct myself, is unstable in all his ways. Well, let me read this. Write down 2 Samuel chapter 22. You better stop playing around and trying to low-key, part-time serve Satan and then trying to get into the Bible. That won't work. That's insulting to God. You can't create and make your own Bible and make your own way. No, you cannot. Well, I'm going to get a little bit of this and I'm going to get a little bit of that. No, you can't do that. It's one or the other. You demon, I'm calling you out. Yes, I am. And if you feel offended, maybe it's you. Don't get offended. A true believer of God is not offended by one word that's coming out of my mouth right now because they know that they're really saved. But you're playing around with Satan. You are you are full of pride. You think you're a badass. You think you're a badass and so cool or whatever. You are not impressing God trying to be super cool, trying to trying to agree with everybody, trying to gain friendship. You're trying to agree with everybody to gain the friendship of this world. And not one of those people you're trying to gain friendship with in this world can get you into glory. Perhaps you really don't believe. And so you all you care about is the friendship of this planet. But you're making a dangerous, you, you in danger, you're making a serious mistake if you think that any of these friends that you're gonna make on YouTube and on Instagram and, 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 and online, that you can kind of hide and, and, and you think you can make friends like that. You have made us, you are in error. You are in error. You pick up that Bible and ask God to give you interpretation and understanding and stop trying to gain friendship with this world. There's nothing wrong with having genuine God-fearing friends, but are you trying to dibble and dabble and be friends with everybody? You can't be friends with everybody. No, you can't. No, you can't because not everybody is of God. Not everybody is of God. 
You can't be friends with the world and the devil at the same time. You better stop playing these games now because God woke me up at 3.30 in the morning. Now, let me try to make it through this chapter. This is uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. Yeah, excuse me. I keep interrupting my own self. Stop trying to hide. You sitting there trying to hide. I don't know why I'm saying this. You, 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 you come out. You, mm -mm. you can't, you cannot, you cannot serve the devil and God at the same time. See, only a demon hides in the dark. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him. You see this? He spoke these words when God delivered him out of his enemies, David did. And if they're good enough for David, I think we can read them too. Let me see. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. You hear that? He spoke these words. It says, in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock. As you wake up in the morning, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for giving me another day, Heavenly Father. This is the day that the Lord has ma made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And then how about this? Father, Lord, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Elohim, the God, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. That right there, in him will I trust. You cannot trust in human beings. You cannot trust in human beings. Let me tell you about my neighbor over here. I was uh, doing some stuff outside. I was shoveling snow. I was being of assistance to people. And she kept trailing behind me like a demon, just trailing behind me. And I refused to say anything to her. I'm just trying to take care of my other neighbor who is kind of limited with her walking. And she's got the three dogs. And what I do is I'm just quietly going over and clearing areas. I'm not standing around looking for applause and making a video. No, I'm talking about this for a specific reason. So anyways, I'm clearing and I'm just being of assistance as God had commanded me to do. God told me what to do, and I'm listening to what the Father's telling me. It doesn't make me better than anybody. It just means that God says it, and I obey. Handle your business with the Father any way you like. So she says, oh, let me, and she's trying to come near me, and I'm just shoveling, and I won't let her touch me. Don't touch me. Because you're, you, there's something on you and I can see it and I can feel it. She kept talking and mumbling and talking and mumbling, you know, just, just saying anything to try to get me to talk. So I got done and here comes my 92 year old neighbor. A truck pulls up. My 92 year old neighbor shuffles his way out of the house. When I just got done with his driveway, here he comes. So the lady still, uh, another neighbor pulls up and I'm talking to him. She, the neighbor, is talking, is going, uh, uh, just talking all crazy. I said, ignore that woman. That woman just likes talking and just ignore her. He goes, I know, we all know, or something like that, whatever way he said it. And so she's talking. So I finally piped up and said to her, I just looked at her. I said, God told me to come out here and do this. Because he knew, God knew that that, that 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 man would come down the driveway. And that driveway had to be cleared. And that's why I'm doing it. Then she just starts talking, saying anything, just trying to pull me into conversation with me. She was babbling. 
She was babbling. I think something wrong with her. She's babbling. And then she tried to waddle her way over to me. Hey, hey, can I get a touch? Can I, I go? I go. I said, when she started and she said that to me, I said, don't touch me. I'm sorry. Don't touch me. Because whatever is, whatever, I'm praying for her now. I'm praying for her. I'm praying for her. I'm not evil. I did her driveway too. Of course I did. I what do you think? I'm going to leave her hanging. No, there's a lot of people that can't, move, you know, get around. So you got to do what thus saith the Lord. Don't just talk about you believe in Jesus and not love your neighbor as you would yourself. But at the same time, you must be aware of people and what they carry. I'm talking about demonically. Don't let just anybody touch you. You can call me paranoid and crazy if you want to. But I digress. Yep, I said that. I said, don't touch me. And I explained to her in a very a few sentences why I was out there. Because God had... And when I said that the Lord... When I said that to her, she sort of like, you know, she didn't really say much. She's kind of like, oh, oh uh, amen, like that. See, when you get close to the Father, it doesn't mean you're better than anybody. It doesn't mean you're holier than thou. It means you, you seeking the Father. You're seeking some help. You need some weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. It's a spiritual battle going, down, uh, going on down here. You got to be very careful who you hang around and don't let just anybody put their hands or touch you. But I digress. And he said, uh, 2 Samuel 22 and verse 2, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield. Do you see that? He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. The horn meaning the strength. Horn defined as like strength. He is my shield and the and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou saveth me from violence. This right here, th this chapter right here got you covered. Got you covered going in and coming out, my friends. Verse number four. Now, here's some instructions. In verse four, I will call on the Lord. Who is what? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from mine enemies. See, it's not just, we're just not reading scripture just to read it to appear to be holy or a certain way. We're trying to learn something. There's some specific keys right there in just those two, ver the, those two of uh, verse three and verse four. Verse three is describing, describing the Lord, some of his qualities, some of his attributes. And then uh, the, the, uh, in verse three, uh, he's your rock. Uh, in him will I trust. He's my shield, the horn of my salvation, the strength of my salvation. That's telling you some of his attributes and some of his power, some of his strength. And then the next verse says, what are we going to do about all that? I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. And then it talks about in verse five, when something comes upon you. When the waves of death, verse five, compassed or surrounded me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Verse six, saw the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. See, I had that experience about 30 something minutes ago. I had to, I was fighting to wake up because of what was happening in the dream that I was having. But God woke me up. Thank you, God. So anyways, uh, the end of, uh, or the end of uh, verse six, the snares of death prevented or confronted me. 
Well, what are we going to do when those kinds of hellish things happen? Verse 7 tells you, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he what did hear my voice out of his temple? And my cry did enter, that's stressed in my study Bible, did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven of heaven moved and shook because he was angry or he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him, were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were laid bare or discovered at the rebuking of the Lord. At the blast of the breath of his nostrils, he sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. Get that down in your spirit right there. He drew me out of many waters. He pulls us out of danger and difficulty, my friends. This is why we got to get into these scriptures and, and meditate on it. Meditate on, he talking about, he talks about, uh, verse 5, when the waves of death encompassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. And then in verse 7 tells you the answer. What am I going to do? I'm scared. I had a demonic nightmare. Uh, I feel a sense of evil and a presence in my home or around me. I feel just kind of uncomfortable, whatever that is. Verse 7 gives you the answer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he did hear my voice. Okay, back down to uh, verse 17. He sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. Verse 18. Verse 18, I have underlined in my study Bible. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. You see there? God has every answer to every possible thing that you may deal with while you're on the earth for your 90 or 100 years or however long you're going to be on the earth. He gives you the solutions. It's a matter of opening up the book and saying it, reading it, getting it in your eye gate, down into your heart and down into your spirit and in your mind. And now you got another piece of weaponry to use. Come on now. Let me see. Verse 19, they prevented or confronted me in the day of my calamity. But what? The Lord was my support or my stay. The Lord was my stay. Again, the Lord, that, that is your firm foundation that can't be moved, beloved. The Lord, the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord. Verse 20, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. See, so uh, in order for him to delight in me, I must be do I must do things that are pleasing to him. I can't serve I can't serve the enemy and and say those words, those four words. I can't light candles or try to go through the back door for ble for the devil's blessings. Oh, I'm broke. Oh, I need food. I need it. Oh, let me go over here and light this candle. Let me go over here and do something unscrupulous. Let me, in other words, low-key serve Satan to get what I, my earth, some of my earthly needs. 
you can't do that and then read this part. Uh, he delivered me because he delighted in me. He's not delighting in you if you're doing that. If you think that you can do things and serve the devil, and then you can read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22, the second part of verse 20, he delivered me because he delighted in me. He's not delighting in you. You trying to make friends with some of these devil, devil filled people that refuse to repent? You trying to make everybody be your buddy? You can't do that. No, you can't. You can pray for them at a distance that they be delivered. But as long as they're acting crazy and they're serving Satan, you're not supposed to be hanging. Why would you hang around with a Satan influenced person? Why would you do that? Why? You can pray for a person at a distance. There's no distance in prayer. Everybody doesn't have to be your friend. You understand me? You can pray for them, but you can't have everybody in your bosom. No, you can't. Because they're going to bring confusion. They're going to bring their little demon friends with them. At verse number 21. See, people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. That's why there's just all together, there's four of us together. They don't, they're coming in, they hear a little bit of that, they run. Tells you, hmm. Anyway, <laughs> verse number 21, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. You see that? He rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. Hath he recompensed me? What, why in the world is God going to be giving gifts to someone that knows that this is God's enemy and they're serving him? Why is he going to? Oh, goodness gracious. Let me stop. Verse 22, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. Are you keeping the ways of the Lord? Am I? Are we keeping God's ways? Well, how in the world is he going to bless me and answer my prayers if I'm not serving him? For I have kept the ways, verse 22, of the Lord and, and have not wickedly departed from my God. You see that? And have not wickedly departed from my God. Verse 23, for all his judgments were before me and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from mine iniquity again and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore, the Lord have recompensed or rewarded me according to what? According to my righteousness, according to the clean, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. Verse 26, with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, froward underlined in my study Bible, pervert it, pervert it. And with the perverted or froward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory or shrewd, shrewd. Uh, verse 28, and the afflicted people thou wilt save. But thine eyes are upon the haughty. Haughty is kind of those prideful people, prideful people that stick their necks out and they got, you know, they got that, they got their nose so far up in the air that if it was raining, they drown, you know, snobby, you know. Haughty, ooh, haughty. But thine eyes are upon the haughty. What's going to happen to them? That thou mayest bring them what? Down. Verse 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord. That's right. See, he is light. And if we're serving him, we're not afraid to go to that light so that he can see all our, see all our deeds. Let's see. God, he is light. Now, those that are serving in darkness... They kind of want to be in a dim light. They want to show a little some something because they're partially serving in this world. They're partially serving Satan and then partially serve, trying to serve the Lord at the same time. They're trying to be friendly with everybody. You can't be friends with everybody. 
Anyways, verse 29, for thou art my lamp, O Lord. And the Lord, here we go. And the, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee have I run through a troop. And by my Elohim, or by my God, have I leaped over a wall. Verse 31, 2 Samuel 22, verse 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield or buckler to all them that what? Trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or And who is a rock save our God? Save meaning except for our. Who is a rock except for our God? Or save our God, except our God. Verse number 33. God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like deer's feet or hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war or for war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou has also given me the shield of thy salvation. You hear that? The shield of thy salvation used as a shield or described as a shield in the scripture, the scripture. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness has made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet do, did not slip. Get this and listen to verse 38. I have pursued mine enemies, which is why I'm on the air right now. I'm on the air in the name of Jesus Christ just chasing the demonic forces out in the name of Jesus Christ. And that includes them demons in people. I ain't playing around now. I have pers in the name of Jesus Christ, verse 38, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. Verse 39, and I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. Verse 40, for thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me has thou subdued under me. You hear that? Them that rose up against me, thou, excuse me, hast thou subdued under me. Thou hast also given me the necks, the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. Hate underlined in my study Bible, disrespect me. Verse 42, they looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. 